now that the dust has settled and the fight of the century is finally over, I just want to take some time out to talk about it really quick. I mean, after the long wait, the fight finally happened. And to many people, it didn't live up to expectations. The only people who seem to have enjoyed the fight are Mayweather fans and people who enjoy a defensive style of boxing. Tons of people who don't follow the sport tuned in. The media hyped up Manny's power. So people were automatically thinking to themselves, hmm, he may knock him out, which, of course, isn't the case. Or they were foolish enough to think that Floyd would risk anything to try to finish off Manny. The last time Floyd risked trying to finish an opponent was when he fought Arturo Gotti in 2005. The way the fight started, Floyd took control of the pace of the fight. According to Freddie Roach, you know, Floyd's legs were supposed to be shot and he couldn't move as fast. But, you know, that turned out to be extremely false. I mean, he started the fight with his jab, you know, he, then he incorporated his right straight into the mix. I mean, Manny couldn't hit anything in the first round. You know, he was a little too tentative for my liking. But, you know, plus he didn't use footwork in the first round, which was kind of strange. But in the next couple of rounds, it was a little bit more competitive, but... You know, Floyd was still controlling the pace of the fight, even though Manny kind of started using his footwork and was doing a lot better. But when they got to the fourth round, Manny Pacquiao was looking like the same guy that fought Brandon Rios, Tim Bradley in the rematch, and Chris Algieri last year. Because he started giving Floyd angles, then he connected with that nice-ass left hand that rocked the shit out of Floyd. Floyd could say whatever he want. He was rocked. If the ropes weren't there, I think he would have went down. But then, you know, Manny started wailing on him with the flurry in the corner. But unfortunately for him, you know, the flurry didn't do anything, which is why he backed off. You know, people were like, oh, man, why the hell would he back off? Because Floyd was blocking, like, pretty much everything. I think only, like, three of those punches in the entire flurry landed. So Manny stepped back to preserve his energy, which was a smart thing to do. But he's Manny easily took that fourth round. I mean, and that shit was crazy. Like, when the fifth round started, I expected Manny to be more energized and continue from <clears throat> excuse me from where he left off. But again, he started to move in a straight line, being too predictable, and let Floyd control the pace of the round. So the game went back to being pot shot, move, clinch, rinse, and repeat. But, you know, we get into the sixth round, and Manny Pacquiao, once again, he's showing that he got the fight. You know, he's starting to give angles once again. He backed Floyd up against the ropes. He was utilizing his feints. You know what I'm saying? He threw the double jab, which kind of made Floyd back up against the ropes. You know, and then Manny started... Well, and with flurries again, I mean, they were ineffective, but they were scoring on the scorecards, which was a good thing for him. And when the sixth round was over, I mean, most people either had to fight at three to three or four to two for Floyd or maybe four to two for Manny. I don't know how you, you know, whatever. <laughs> but but from rounds seven through 12, with only, in my opinion, the 10th round being the closest round because... I don't think nobody did anything in the 10th round to to solidify who actually won that round. So I thought that fight, I thought that round was, was even. But the rest of the rounds, it was pretty much Floyd controlling the pace of the fight, the space, just the entire range because he was just, he was just right straight. He might throw a hook, throw a left hook every now and then, jab. You know, Manny, he, Manny came forward. He was trying to do what he could. But unfortunately for him, he was being a little bit too predictable with the way he was boxing. And the fight, to me, ended up looking just like Robert Guerrero versus Floyd Mayweather Jr., which, you know, it was, wasn't, that fight wasn't bad either. But, you know, Robert Guerrero's game plan was, was kind of bad. I mean, after he fought Andre Berto, you know, you kind of expected him to come in there and, you know, try to bully Floyd. I mean, he tried, but, I mean, he couldn't catch the guy. And then it was like, all right, so maybe he's going to start giving him angles. No, he just kept charging forward. I mean, other than Marcos Maidana in the first fight, 
who to me was the only person that can kind of incorporate what Jose Luis Castillo did in, in that first fight also. But, you know, I mean, I don't know. People, man, you just got to get to do angles. If you got footwork, use your footwork against them. And, I mean, Amir Khan, I know he has footwork. And I'm pretty sure he would try to use it against him. But then again, I don't know, maybe he'll fall into that web of just being too predictable and letting Floyd figure out his timing. And thus, you will get the same type of fight. I mean, if you know anything about Floyd Mayweather, you can go back to his first fight with Roberto Apodaca. He always used his feet. But he only really started clinching in the later part of his career, you know, probably due to age. But as far as Manny Pacquiao goes, I mean, I've been following the dude since the early 2000s, and I've never seen him this inactive other than maybe the first Eric Morales fight. I don't know if he got demoralized during the middle of the fight, but I've never seen him so gun shy. I mean, you blame the shoulder injury or whatever on it, but I've never seen any athlete go into anything 100% unless they took off like a whole year or something. But I, for one, I would not want to see a rematch between these two guys. Me personally, I don't think the fight was close at all. You know, some people are thinking that being aggressive and charging forward is winning, but, you know, I always thought that boxing was about hitting and not being hit. And nobody outside of Pernell Whitaker that I've seen does it better than Floyd Mayweather. The fact that he so-called ran but landed 67 more punches than Manny Pacquiao, you know, kind of decided the fate of what was going on. I mean, if you didn't like the fight, you have to put the blame on both boxers. If it didn't live up to your expectations. I mean, you pretty much know what to expect, expect from Floyd Mayweather. But for Manny Pacquiao, he really deserves some blame because he never adapted to what Floyd Mayweather was doing. I mean, at the end of the day, these are two of the best boxers of this era, generation, you know, from the late 90s to 2015. But uh, at this point, I mean, it's time for guys like Keith Thurman, Gennady Golovkin, Andre Ward, Earl Smith Jr., Adrian Broner, uh, Kel Brook, you know, even Amir Khan still at this point because he's still young. I mean, it's, it's time for these guys. Uh, of course, Saul Alvarez. You know, it's time for those guys to take the reins and take over. I mean, one more guy I would like to see, but, you know, he kind of got faded into obscurity from HBO. It's Guillermo Rigondeaux, who is also another defensive wizard. And in the lower weight classes, you know, I mean, HBO pretty much got rid of the guy because they said he he has no drawing power because he's too technical, too perfect, and boring. You know, they say the same thing about Eris Landy Lara, but, I mean, I don't know. I'm just weird like that, but these are the type of boxes that I like. I mean, even last week when Klitschko fought, you know, they, they got on his ass for for punching and clinching. I mean, it's a part of boxing. If you're a boxer, boxer's gonna box, brawler's gonna brawl. I mean, it's not a fight. There are no kicks. Can't, you know, beat down the ground of the opponent. I mean, it's a boxing match. What else do you want? I mean, leave thoughts, man. I, I don't know. You know, I, I personally, I thought it was a good, a good fight for what it was. I mean, it wasn't a great fight. But it pretty much went how I expected it to go. Final chance, last 10 seconds of round nine. Had a relative, had a cousin, guess who it would be? It would be timing, because the timing has been perfect and has allowed him to be so precise. Funny, he's doing a really nice job here. I mean, putting his punches together. This is what you're supposed to look like as an offensive fighter. Yes, it is, especially when you have a guy in front of you putting the earmuffs on. You know, you cover up the way that his opponent is. You're supposed to put them together. One or two are going to be blocked. But when you put them together like that, they're going to get through. 